Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. It's our show where we take junk, otherwise known as things that we found, bought cheap, or in this case today, found in our garage because we're hashtag hoarders, and we turn it into home decor that we either sell or use at our house. Lately, everything's for sale because we're in the middle of a renovation and are going to move, so we're not really decorating at home. And it is time to start cleaning out the garage and all the projects that have just been sitting in there all winter. I know you guys all think that the things that we have here over on that side of the <laughs> studio and in the basement are all that we have. But actually, there is stuff in half of my garage and I have an entire closet um, full of projects. So we are going to be working through those so that way when we move, we're not like really upset at ourselves. Or just throwing it all away because we're in a hurry. Yeah, you can't throw away my junk. Do you see my shirt? It says, I love junk. I do see your shirt. That's... <laughs> and you do love it. I love the junk so much. All right, well, let's get on with the crafting. All right, I'm going to pull up the comments, see what everybody is saying. So we have, this used to be in a frame, and everybody said, oh, don't throw it away. But look. We painted the frame because we loved it. Do you guys the see that? The frame was amazing, but check it out. It's got that? like four holes in it. That were already pre-taped and things from the back end there's there's a hole here down here there's one right here there's a big hole here so this was almost basically not salvageable here i'll show you the back you can see the holes back yeah, i'll pull the this, back side. this over so you can enjoy the mannequin but yeah. can you guys see our project so, from yesterday oh it's got a fun old kind of frame on it and the canvas is old we did, we're not super in love with the actual painting itself. It's actually not bad. It's a little dark though. It could use some white wax. Yeah, it's dark. But it's got holes. So I saw that and it says $10, but really we paid $10 for the frame. The frame. So essentially this was free and it was headed towards the garbage. Um, and so we are going to take packing paper. For whatever reason, it's left. it's been left in the garage for... This purpose. <laughs> for this purpose was it For like five it months it's been in the garage. Five months is generous. I think, or like, I think it's more like 10 months <laughs> or a year. At any length, we are going to be decoupaging that with brown paper used for packing. Now my thought was I would use some of the paper that I get when I'm shopping at the thrift stores, but I couldn't find enough. But if you guys shop at thrift stores and they wrap your stuff up and you have all that paper and you don't know what to do with it, this would be a good project. In our case, we're using new paper because we have a ton of it and I couldn't find the old stuff. So Zeph's gonna get started decoupaging that. clear off my workspace. We have many projects to work on. We have several. We found some frames and some fun stuff. We're like, oh, look at all these treasures in the garage that we haven't looked at since we had the shop because we had the shop. All right. Okay. Did you get a brush? So yesterday we discovered that while this brush works for decoupaging, this brush excels at it. We like excelling at our crafting. The nice thing about this paper is it's really thin. So I'm just trying to get a neutral base and then we'll put it over to the side and we'll work on some other projects. So I actually found that I had some really cool stuff. Cause like, look at this. Hold on, if I can move this over without knocking everything off. $3. We, I think we thrifted this like a year ago. Does anybody remember this? Anyways, it's, it's super cute and it needs to be finished. Tell us when we thrifted that. Cause I'm sure Does we showed anybody you. know? Does anybody remember when that was purchased? I feel I, I feel like, you know, they say that you have Amazon Nisha. We have thrift Nisha. Like we don't remember when we bought it. Like, hey, where'd this come from? We just know we have it. So we're gonna get this going here. Sherry says she remembers it. So I'm looking, I'm using the uh, liquid patina in the crystal clear chandelier is what we used yesterday. If you haven't seen the mannequin video from yesterday, over here in the corner, can't hardly here, see it. We did a full edited DIY on that. It was a lot of fun and ended up way better than we hoped it would. So Zeb's initial idea was to just do the music paper because that, if you're a channel member, this music paper here is the printable for, one of the printables for this month. But I really wanted to mix it up with um, the book pages. And in the picture, it looked like the um, music was like a blue shade and it's not. It's like black in shades of gray. So it actually goes really well with the book pages. And then um, we used the Japonica transfer, which I never thought I was going to find a use for these ladies, but because of their shape, it just really looked good. 
And now I've used the whole transfer, so. Sammy says that she has a whole storage unit of surprises to go through. <laughs> go, go do it, go have fun, go see what's in there. I actually heard of people using brown paper and sealing it up and using it for um, <clears throat> flooring. It looks yeah, like Yeah, I've, I've seen people do that on flooring. It's a fun little craft that's pretty inexpensive and really changes the look of your room. Tammy says she's already scouting for a mannequin. I know, if this one sells, I've never sold a mannequin like this before. I might do more and come up with different ideas. So let's see what all we got here. Indy says she loves decoupaging anything. And Jamie, you guys are a team. You say I a lot. Maybe we can incorporate a little more. Fat chance. We not. discussed this yesterday. We discussed that yesterday. <laughs> well, we discussed it for channel members. So I, Pamela wasn't on there. But it's, it's an old habit. It's like a habit from when she was five. <laughs> when she first started learning to talk. You should hear her talk to her sisters. They say the same my, thing. They say my mom. My mom and my dad, when she's talking to her sisters, it cracks me up every time. <laughs> I was raised like an only child, and so it's just hard to change the vernacular. It's kind of like saying, stop saying hormones instead of, no, hormones. Sorry, I call it hormones and they're hormones. It's only because your dad, your dad's the only human I know that calls them hormones, and you are too. No. Oh, Zeb, I wouldn't go all the way around that. I guess we can just I'm just off. going over to the edge, and, you know, I got lots of paper, so. Okay. And this um, is, this is going to have some wrinkles. Here? Oh, I say wrinkles. almond instead of, what are they called, almonds? You almond? know, it depends on where you're from, but I yeah. I call him an almond, because if your friend is named Al, you don't call him all. So I say things weird, but I am trying. I'm trying. You can teach an old dog new tricks. All right, let's see what we got here. We said take the cloth off. <laughs> Janice says the two of us are one, so she gets it. <laughs> you have no idea. When we start talking and then we say the same thing, or we go to our restaurant and we order the same thing, I'm like, I don't even know what's going on here. All right, I'm going to help you on this side. Okay. I'm just trying not to have too many, uh, too many what? Overlapping edges. All right, there you go. Am I gonna need to get my other brush out? Yeah, I think so, because I'm gonna need that brush. <laughs> Ooh, let the brush out. Thank you. This is my favorite brush for this. So once this gets covered, we're gonna dry it off hopefully quickly. We'll see. This is just the base, and I have some old transfers. I thought about maybe stamping it up. I'm gonna go get another yeah, brush. Yeah, I'm thinking Zeb, on the edge, use the flat sides, and let's expose that raw edge of the canvas. So maybe take those off there. Oh, I, I'll just I'll just razor knife them off. Okay, because there's like this really cool old edge on the side that I want to show off. This is so much easier to decoupage with. Oh man, the curved edges on the mannequin. It's like, come on. We may have had some choice words for that mannequin. By the time I was done. It actually, decoupaging wasn't hard. It was get that transfer over her curves. She's a curvy lady. Oh, people were asking in the comments what you're gonna name her since you named all your other mannequins. Oh, I haven't named her yet. And Jean actually asked me that yesterday and I told Jean she could name her, so. We'll find out what her name is when Jean comes in. And a lot, somebody said to wet your paper and it doesn't wrinkle, but I'm actually okay with a few wrinkles. I mean, not on my face, but on my projects, yes. We like the wrinkles on the projects. Distressed projects, not, but you know, you can't really control it. At some point, it just happens. And even if you hide your face, my mom always says, you can tell how old somebody is if you look at their neck. My mom's 80, almost 81, so she's got lots of She words. still has half a year to 81. Yeah, she's got lots of don't, words. Don't steal her time. <laughs> I was talking to her, what, last night on FaceTime? Yeah. And she's like, do you think they could do anything for these wrinkles on my face? I'm like, mom, you're so cute, and you only look like you're probably in your late 60s and you're 80. Like, it's okay to have wrinkles. I'll remind you of that conversation when you're 80. 
You know, you don't have to be <laughs> smart aleck. My mom's cute. She actually recently stopped coloring her hair. So she didn't have gray hair my whole life until about, what, like a year ago? Yeah. She keeps it short. She looks cute with gray hair. She reminds me of my grandma, her mom. Because I was a late life baby, I only knew one of my grandmas. And my grandma was funny. All right. All right, let's see if I can okay. see it. She's my grandma was saucy too. And you know, my mom was telling me last night, cause I was talking to her about me being kind of all over the place. And my dad, I was laying down some law with my dad about- <laughs> The law laid down. Her dad is eight, almost 87. And he wants to drive up here 10 hours and he he can still drive but no he cannot still drive oh, did they finally tell him no, no i mean they haven't told i guess they, i don't know what they when officially the state tells him. him no then i'll start telling people your dad can't drive i don't know that it's been officially made that way but at any length he is 86 <laughs> almost 87 and he's super like sharp and can do a lot of things but he's really irritated that nobody wants him to drive the 10 hours up here and so i just told him i'm like dad i'm just we we pay for them to fly we send them tickets and i'm like dad you you can't like if you drive up here you're not going to have anywhere to stay Let's and he talk hates to he hates airports he, they always want to wheel him around in a wheelchair so he likes that they're making a big fuss because he can't walk for the mile to the terminal you know <laughs> yeah he doesn't mind that but anyways he told my mom that he was upset and i said i don't know why he's surprised he raised me to be sassy and then my mom tells me she's been liberated all her life because my mom was born in 1939 so it's she she lived through the time when women didn't have uh you know just barely got the right to vote and they weren't you know there was a lot of things going on my mom's always been saucy and i like her my grandma was too my grandma put up with more stuff than my mom but my mom doesn't put up with stuff I actually remember the day that my dad was like, why won't you let me tell you what to do? I was like. Well, so Jamie told her dad yesterday, if he drives up, he'll have to find a place to stay because he can't stay with us because he'll be in trouble. <laughs> oh, Caitlin says they told Grandpa Jack he can't drive if he wants the heart procedure, which I don't know if he's going to do it. I don't, who knows? I love my dad. I'm actually super close to him. I'm like a pretty good mix of my mom and my dad. My dad watches my videos. Are so you watching? Do we have any comments? Uh, <laughs> We've just been chatting away over here at Decoupage. Sorry. We'll get to the fun stuff in about five minutes when we get this uh, all decoupage. I'm going to try to heat gun it dry. We'll see how that works. Heather says her client is 100. Whew. It's a good long time. And Carrie says hi from Norway. And can you imagine living to be that long and seeing all the changes from and like I the early 1900s to now? Exactly. My mom also loves any modern gadgets or technology. Like FaceTime is her favorite thing ever. Um, my mom also loves a good turtleneck, Caitlin says. It's true, uh, she doesn't like to be cold and she will- uh, And it hides your neck, but we just said that that's how you can tell how old somebody is. Oh yeah. This has paint on it. You can tell it's been in our garage for a hot minute. Yeah, it's got some overspray. Oops, I have a little hole there. Shoot, I don't wanna. Yeah, I've been Oops. having to, I've been making little pieces Shoot. to chase holes. Hold on, let me put that back down. Yesterday, I had glue all over me and Zeb had like none. I'm like, how does that even happen? Still, still the same today. You're always clean. None, none glue. None glue for you? It's like not sticking down. All right. Whoop. I promise we'll get to something more interesting, but this is gonna be it for a second. Um, one of my best friends is 107. I call her Miss Ruby. I love her so much. That's super fun. And Belinda said I knew all my grandparents plus three of my great grands. That's way fun. I was basically raised by grandparents, even though they were my parents. Because <laughs> they already were grandparents when I was born. My mom is much like me and always has to be busy. And she was a little, she said she was bored. She's like, I don't know what to do. Your dad was working all the time. My kids were almost, I had, she had one at home. She's like, I just thought I'd have another baby. Okay, Mom. Thank you. We're going to see. I don't know how this is going to go. This is way more wrinkly than... Yeah, it's well, it's got a lot of flex to it. So, like, you smooth the wrinkles out, and then you brush some stuff on, and it pops back up, and you get more wrinkles. We'll see what happens when you dry it. I think it'll be okay, and I'm not worried about the wrinkles Zep's too much. Zeb's pieces are bigger. Yeah, I've been using the large pieces, because I'm in a hurry to get this on. <laughs> um, 
It's all right. But I'm still covering a good amount of space. Yeah. And I started after you. Well, you work very fast. I'm, I'm over here meticulously trying to get out every wrinkle and you're like, it's on. <laughs> this is a true story. I feel like that's more like our personalities. You're a little bit more meticulous about things than me, which is why you do the electrical at the farmhouse. That's why I'm doing the electrical. Right, With lots hand. of assistance and calling my dad almost every day. Hey, how do I do this? And your cousin Cliff. <laughs> yeah, Cliff has been super helpful. He's a <clears throat> licensed electrician here in Utah. He's, he's given me a few pointers and tips. And he's also helping me keep with ENCODE. <laughs> yeah. Keeping ENCODE is good. I can't hardly reach. I'm too short. Hey, you're using my brush. I need to put those we down. need a little small little Midget. spot there. Yeah. Oops. Put that there. Does liquid patina work better than Mod Podge? I feel like it does. It's we not as like it. It's not as like plasticky. Yeah. I don't know oh, you're going. You're going too much. I gotta get this paper down first. Okay. I'm excited about it. Look, there. We're almost done with it. I it's like its like... own piece of art by itself. Some of this um, painting is coming through. That's all right. And when it dries, it won't be as thin, I think. Hey, you can cover this up with one spot. Make me a piece of fit back. <laughs> is, that, is that good? Yeah. All right, now I feel like we need to like cover the whole... That only took like two sheets of paper. I grabbed way more than was necessary. Let <clears throat> me move that out of the way. Yep. Next project. We're gonna let this dry for a minute. You need to mush that down. There's no mushing it. Yeah, like right here. Well, I need to. How about? It's it's like that everywhere. It'll be all right. No, just give me two. Okay, seconds. I'm gonna show them. It's like its own piece of artwork by itself, and it does have some wrinkles. Like we said, it's moving a lot because this is this is uh, flexible, really flexible. We're making. We're covering up this canvas. Somebody was like, what are we doing? We're covering up this canvas because... If you missed it, the canvas had a big piece of art on it. It had art on it, it but holes. it also had three holes. So that's what we're doing with that one. Okay, I'm going to take this out to the front room, and I'm going to put the fan on it, and I'll be right back. Next, I feel like you might want to mush it a little when you get it. Okay, I'll mush it. Did you get scissors? Okay. Right Next on the agenda is this. It was $2, and it only had one square. So Zeb, trace that square, and I'm going to cut it out of cardboard so we can paint them. Let's see if we can. I don't know why this one is bigger. Which one is correct? This one or this one? The smaller. So right, right here. I just um, moved it so that it was to the flat edge so you only have to cut three edges. Gotcha. I'm going to cut out this side. We use cardboard a lot and paint it because we have a ton of boxes. Fun fact. This is how we dry furniture out really fast, is this fan here. We just put it on there and in about 20 minutes, the whole thing's dry. We can put another coat on. Sometimes it blows dust into our projects. I don't like that. But otherwise it's a good solution. All right. So this was $2 at the thrift store. And I think the reason why it was cheap is because it was missing one piece of glass. Let's make sure those are gonna fit in there. That one doesn't fit. That one does. All right, this one is just a little bit too wide. Let me put that down there. Still doesn't fit. Well, you didn't cut it on the line. Oh, is that what that line was? Yeah, I had it. I had the two of these traced. Well, there's that. All right, see if that one fits down. All right. If you cut it on the line, I'm sure it'll go. Looks like a pea shell finish on the frame or on the Mod Podge situation. Angelica said, my three-year-old granddaughter saw the iPad screen and said, there's Zeb and Jamie. <laughs> well, that's fun. Glad that we could uh, be there. I feel like you've made it because three-year-olds usually only know the YouTubers that like build stuff. Out is of she a crafter is the question. <laughs> I don't know. Is she crafty, Angelica? All right. I'm just making sure 
everybody has their questions. Okay, so now we're going to paint these. Do you need me to take these hooks off? Yes. Are we going to make a piece of cardboard for that one too? Um, that what one are we I don't doing know. on that one? But this one, I need this cardboard out of there though. Oh, you need it out. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it out so you can Press start. Press cottage. There is a piece of wood in the middle of that um, canvas. That's the word for it. Okay. Okay. White swan. Check. I need a brush though. We'll get these drying, and then you can paint that one apothecary if you want. Once you get the paint uh, one, hooks on. what one, what? Oh, that piece six, there. Yes. Yeah. So this was originally three dollars, and it's probably it's not old. It's probably from some craft store or something. But it's made to look crusty. Yep. So hello, winning. Um, yes, you can spray DIY paint. We have videos. So just in the search bar, just type Jamie Ray Vintage DIY paint and then put sprayer and they should pop up. You do have to water it down. You have to water down every paint. There's a have. whole playlist, like six, seven videos on yeah. spraying paint and sealers. We spray paint quite a bit, especially in the summer. This time of year, we don't as much because it takes longer to dry. All right, one done. You mean go put that in front of the fan? No, it'll blow away. It will blow away and get paint on the floor. We only Rebecca know from says experience. she's 54 and she's not okay with the wrinkles are sagging. 54 is not old because the closer I get to 40, the closer, like, the less old numbers get. I'm like, like 100 is old, right? All right. <laughs> Jay. Jody says I look good with my hair up. Um, funny story about my hair. I'm all, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm not super tall. You probably can tell when I'm next to them. I'm five foot four and I drive, we only own big vehicles. And so when I get into my SUV, I have to have the seat like cranked way high up. So that way I can see over the steering wheel. In fact, my teenage son who's six foot two always makes fun of me because you can see the driver's seat is like, and the passenger seat is like at a normal level. But when I do my hair like this, I know my messy bun's too high when I have to duck to get in the car because I literally will like hop in the car and whack my head on the ceiling or like where the door is with my hair. I'm like, oh, messy bun's on point today, hitting it on the top of the car. And then I have to like use the button and push my seat down so that way I have room for me and the bun. Usually it just happens on second day. I never, I never have that problem. With the hair because you don't have any hair but i do have to sit with the seat lower okay if you guys are just tuning in or you've never watched our channel before i'm going to give you a little tidbit about diy paint you can paint almost anything in fact yesterday we painted that plastic stuck to that painted cardboard and then you'll see that zeb just slapped a coat of paint on this in fact somebody the other day said What's the difference between DIY paint and like homemade chalk paint? And she's like, all I know is that Jamie and Zeb slap a coat of paint on something and it's done. And I'm like, that's it exactly. Unless it's super shiny, like usually one coat of paint is really good, especially if it's porous. And then you just wet distress it and seal it. And that's why I love this paint. So you can pick it up at jamierayvintage.com. Sorry for the commercial, but gotta do it. All right. Farrier thing says they're going to start carrying our stencil line. That's exciting Ooh, yay. because we are like this close to our 2020 release. It has taken a month and a half of designing and going back and forth, but I have some really great designs and things that people have been asking for, so I am excited. Um, Jody says, I live in Ohio. Can I order paint from you? Yes, absolutely. We ship out hundreds of packages every week all over the U.S., Australia, the UK. Lots of places in Europe. Lots of places. Canada. Um, we ship out a ton of stuff. So absolutely, we can ship to you. We actually just hired a second shipper because we have been busy enough and our Ivy, who ships for us, her husband does taxes and so they're busy this year. So we got, we got her sister as a backup. Alright, All right. do you want to try heat gunning those or do you, are you worried they'll wrinkle up? Anna says that my bond makes her think of Pebbles Flintstone. We're going to put like a, a button in it. That's what I'll be for 
um, Halloween this year. Are we going to heat gun it? No, I'm just going to wait till you're done and then I'm going to work on the next project. Okay. Did we? Oh, I guess you could pass me that we'll gold frame. Cardboard. Sorry. Yeah. The cardboard's going over here. So check out this gold frame that's just been chilling out in our garage behind a bunch of other frames. It's pretty, right? Just kidding. It's kind of floppy in the back, so I'm thinking, can I have some of that cardboard? Yeah, I would I need definitely to make it secure, not that. That's for that. There. Oh, did you already cut that to No, bed? but that's the right size for that. And if I cut that, then I'll cut it so it's neat. Are you going to take the frame out? No, I'm leaving the glass in. Aren't you going to paint it? Yeah. We'll take the... No, it's all going to be one. Oh, you're painting the glass, too. It's all getting painted. I was super confused. I'm like, why are you leaving the glass in if you can take it out? <laughs> I'll, later on, I'll cut a piece of cardboard and glue it to the back so it's, like, secured. But this is just so that way the glass doesn't flop around. All right, got that. All right, I need my IOD. I need my IOD. I need a shirt that says hashtag pass the IOD. What IOD are you? This? Yes. Thank you. And then we've got some new clay right here. I've done this once before, if you guys have seen it, and it turned out really cool. Nobody's bought it yet, but I'm holding out hope that they will. Um, and then there was a little artist brush. Okay, so this is the, I think it's heirloom roses. Is that what this one's called? Yes. <clears throat> the package is on the floor over there. That is what it's called. Okay, so this one we haven't used before yet. Just a quick coat of paint, and it's super transformed. Imagine that with white inserts and the hooks back on there. Jana says she's totally in the mood to slap some paint. Like, sometimes it's just totally therapeutic to do that. So this has a lot of detail in it, so for sure you're going to want to... Do you need me to get the construction it. adhesive out? Yes, I do, actually. All right, I want to make myself some roses here. And then, how about I make the roses? <clears throat> talk and you blow them on for me okay I'm actually I've been known to IOD some stuff all right okay I have my paper clay in a bag it's actually not open yet but I always want to show you it in the bag because while you're working on a project, do not leave your clay out. It will dry. Rebecca said, Jamie, it's okay. He's right. That's right. What were you right about? I don't know. All right, make me some paper Did you clay. Take the cardboard out? No, I just shipped it because you didn't really have it in there. <laughs> Zeb's right a lot. It's true. Debbie doesn't ship to Canada in the winter. Yeah, you'd have to send heat packs with it. Do you have, is there a retailer there that carries it though that could put a heat pack in it for you? I'm not allowed to ship to Canada or I would ship you some even in the winter. Yeah, we use the little cricket packs that for like small animals that go in the mail. They last for like three days or four days totally or something. The unretired designer, if you still can't get it, like no retailers would send it to you. Message me on Facebook and I will talk to Debbie and see because that is so frustrating if you got a project you need to finish and you can't get your paint. Or I'll find somebody in Canada that will get it to you because I know the Can Canadian uh, distributor. All right. Hold on. How many roses are we going to do? And do I have a question for you? Query. Am I going to select the layout or are you because last time maybe i should make the roses because last time you were very particular about where you i'll let you do stuff. it <laughs> i'll let you do it this reminds me of uh the roses you made for me oh yeah we so how many roses are you planning on doing and am i going to work any probably leaves like in? five and yes leaves if you want them yes i'm going to need some leaves what brush do you use for decoupage? The blending DIY brush is synthetic, and so I like synthetic best brush. for decoupage, and we carry that on our website. It's a DIY paint brush yeah. made by the DIY paint company. And since it's synthetic, it's also vegan and vegetarian friendly. Okay, so I'm gonna wait just a minute Got to, to see what I whip place out here. these to see what she gives me as far as flowers go. So I will let you answer comments then while I do these. All right. I'm relinquishing comment duty to you. 
Anna Johansson, then imagine wishing for DIY paint in Sweden. I think we shipped to Sweden, although it is a little pricey shipping overseas. This the is shipping true. is, it, it gets crazy quick. I wish I had a, a better option, but we got what we got. What do you use tight bond for versus Gorilla Glue? You so I bond. use, so Jasmine Smith, I use tight bond if I have like a big gap. Or not tight bond. I use Gorilla Glue, like the foaming kind. If I have a big gap I need to fill or it needs to be like really structurally sound, like something that's going to move. Um, but I use the tight bond pretty much for anything wood and MDF too. If I can get two flat surfaces together, the tight bond glue is super, super strong. I often find that I, if, if the bond what is going to break, the wood will break before the glued part breaks. Which one would you like I'll to go with? I'll start hitting me with some leaves. But we need five flowers, you can't just have four. So do you want me to do another like budded style? Since we got some open ones, do you want this one? And this is actually okay. Gorilla Glue construction adhesive that we love for like these molds and stuff because it's, it's thick and it sets up pretty fast. And once I glue these on, it's not going to slide even without taping on a vertical surface. If your mold yeah. was really big, you might still want to tape it on or lay it, lay the piece flat. And the gun is handy. All right, yes. so we've got that. How many leaves do you want? <clears throat> You can um, see I'm asked, a various I'm asked amount of questions. leaves. This is like at home. Sometimes I'll ask him a question. And then I'm like, did you hear me? Sometimes he hears me and sometimes he, he can't hear me. So you don't have to wait for this uh, air dry clay to dry. We like to just get right to it so we can show you what it looks like in the video. And if you're molding it around like a curved surface, it's really great to uh, just put it right on while it's still wet. Well, usually you always glue it wet. It is easier to paint once it's dry. Yeah. And if you're going to make a ton ahead of time, you can freeze them and then bring them to room temperature when you're ready. Because you really do want to glue them to the piece while they're still Okay, pliable. so I think, I think that's going to be the way we go right here. Do you want some a stem or? Yeah, a stem would be fantastic. I'll get you a long stem and then you can cut it up as needed. What are we All right, I'll show you guys up close here in just a sec what I got going on. All right, pass me the comments and I'll read those while I All right. mold for you. I don't know if we're going to get to all these projects today. Well, I think, I we, can, I think we can do a solid three projects. We might not get to that one. The frame? Yeah. yeah. But you guys get the idea of what we got going on today. You'll, you'll understand what we're doing. No, I'm talking about the frame that used to have the mirror. Oh, yeah. You probably won't get to that one. I'm most excited about the cardboard in the little uh, hook shelf situation. I thing. think it's going to be so cute. I, I really love doing stuff with cardboard. I recently have been playing around. My CNC can cut cardboard really quick, oh, easy, like goodness. super fast. And I can do all kinds of fun shapes out of like really inexpensive cardboard. Well, so and we was, used cardboard for ornaments this last winter. Yeah. And that was fun. So I was thinking of uh, things I could do with that. So if you guys have anything you would maybe want to see, you know, shoot me some ideas. We'll see what we can do. Well, we have so much because we get so many things shipped to us. And it's okay to recycle it, but even better if you reuse it because recycling takes up energy too. Oh, you know what? I don't think I dusted that. Oh. All right, so these are just going straight on the glass. This construction adhesive works really well on glass. Well, I got some pieces for you because I didn't dust it. So see what you can do with that. Should have dusted it, because that, that is the oh, really Oh, did you long make me stem. a stem? I made you, you a few. Made me make me some stems. All right. Well, it was supposed to be one long Let's stem. Let's see but if I can get glue better. on this skinny little piece with this big applicator. Sometimes that is a little bit of a problem. But Zeb is good at making it work. Got it. I should use like a spatula. So Shelby, the clear construction glue comes in all kinds of sizes. We get it in this big industrial size because it's like $7 for this whole tube. And it lasts forever. And it lasts us so long. And the applicator is like 6 bucks at Home Depot. So, you know. It's, well, it's uh, just a caulking gun, right? Yeah, the, the caulking gun is, is pretty inexpensive, too. It's nothing fancy, but... Well, a lot of people carry keep those at home anyways for when they have to caulk projects and things, home repairs and whatnot. Yeah. And it doesn't dry out. You know how sometimes you get glue and it dries out? We just, like, let a little dry out on the top when we're done, and then it, like, holds it in place, and then we just snap it off every time we're going to use it. 
and what's inside of the dry mouth. So in the smaller tubes, sometimes it's not always clear. Sometimes it's like a white color, but it's the same formula. Yeah. Oh, that came out a lot better. Always use the cornstarch. I think you're going to need more flowers. It's a possibility. Did I say flowers? I meant leaves. Oh, yes, leaves for sure. I'm still suffering from daylight savings time syndrome. It's, it, it's going to last a week. Just got to buckle in and endure the week. Last night it was midnight and Zeb looks over at me like, I'm not even tired yet. I'm like, I know, it's so weird. We got to go to sleep. We got to stop watching Star Trek and yakking. It's sleepy time. <laughs> what are the comments? I've been uh, eyeballing them here. Okay. Anna Johansson, ooh, you can actually do the shipping to Sweden now. Yes, we can. Get a friend together and get a big order set up or something because it's cheaper to send a big order than it is like, like it almost costs the same amount to ship a few small things as it does to ship a bunch of things. Let's put some leaves up. I feel like those leaves look sad. Get a, get a few friends. <laughs> like that leaf is starting to lose its, and maybe, I mean, not that I'm telling you what to do, but maybe put this over the top of that so you don't have that weird gap there. Oh, you want the leaf up like that? Yeah, and then just put, can you get that off and like put it up? See how you have that weird little situation there? Not that I'm, not that I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> just, just helping you out with your floral composition. Okay. I actually don't like that leaf there at all. Jenna watched The Bachelor. I've watched The Bachelor, Bachelor exactly one time, and that's because my girlfriend was having a rose ceremony party, and I just like any excuse to hang out with my girlfriends, even if it's a show that I don't watch. So, I'm not up on The Bachelor. I think it's an odd concept. But it's probably pretty entertaining. Oh, um, Barb wanted to use what we're using. We're using IOD, air, it's a paper, we call it paper clay, but it's actually like air dry clay. And it is the Cadillac of paper air dry clays. And I can say that with a surety because I've used a ton of them. And anytime somebody who's used other air dry clay uses this air dry clay, they're like, holy Batman, that's good. It's kind of like Play-Doh consistency. And we all know that Play-Doh is the bar when it comes to molding stuff. My Jack loves Play-Doh and we spend lots of time making stuff. He actually stores all of his Play-Doh in the kitchen pantry. He has a whole shelf to himself with all of his accessories. All right. Having to wipe some mishaps with the glue off here and there where I- all right. I think I've made you enough stems. I don't really need any more stems though. Um, well, there would be more stems on the bottom. So you gotta- could Big Top be used for decoupage for napkins? Yeah. Um, you can use Big Top for napkins because napkins are thin. Make sure you peel them apart so you only have one layer. For thicker things, liquid patina is better. I've also used Sweet Pickens Top Coat for napkins. So if it's really thin, you can totally decoupage with Big Top. Liquid patina is a little bit thicker than Big Top, so when you're doing something that needs some extra thickness, then use the liquid patina. And Big Top is a little bit shinier. Liquid patina is more matte, like almost like a liquid wax. You wanna go check our thing that's drying? Yeah, I'll go look at it here. And um, how many, do you need any more leaves? Uh, no, I think I'm good. I might have too many leaves. I'm hoping it looks okay painted. It's looking a little disjointed. I left you to your own. It's looking a little disjointed. I don't normally do Floral Rose arrangement. floral arrangements, yes. I feel like this needs to come down here or something. Just, just leave, just all right. go check on You'll that. You'll get glue all over your fingers and I'll go look at this. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a little paper clay to backfill um, the areas where he connected these branches. That'll help that look a little less disjointed. Sorry, I'll go to comments in a minute. Yeah, that's kind of weird there. You are correct, Zeb, but I don't know how to get rid of that. I think it'll be okay painted. All right, 
Let's get back to comments. I'm going to show it to you up close. So you guys have seen us kind of work on it far away. This is what we've got going on here. Actually, you know what? I don't need it. Let me just pull that down a little bit because I want it to look connected. That's, yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. Well, it's definitely got wrinkles. <laughs> Does it need more? I think it needs more. Well, the fan blew up this corner here while it was drying, so we'll need to reattach that. I feel like but it I, needs I more. I think we can work with that, though. Can you get the iron out? See if that helps, like, flatten it. Okay. We have an iron. Ironically, it's a crafting iron. at home, we don't even have an iron because we don't iron anything. We, we either steam right it there. or put it in the dryer. But here we have an iron because it's used for crafting. All right, what color? Oh, weather wood. All right. Did you mush some stuff around or did you mostly leave it? I did mush it. I, I did some backfilling right here. Oh, okay. To make no, that looks a lot better. I was, I was like, a, there's like a disconnect. I'm like, man, why does this look weird? It's like these are flowing. Yeah, I just backfilled it a little bit. Okay. So I'm, normally, you would wait for this to dry. But this is live television. I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. In the weathered wood, huh? Yeah, we used weathered wood on those ducks from Oh, well, I should show them the ducks. They're on, I put it in community. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah. So if you guys want to see our ducks from Saturday's haul, you can check them out on community. So I'm just going to get this painted. So I like to paint the glass and all and the frame for like a continuous look. And DIY paint will stick to glass, so it's not a problem. And then when it's dry, it you might take a coat it. or two because it is a nope, little shiny. It's covering fine. Is it going on good? Yep. And I like to, when I get it all on there, I just kind of do a bunch of different directions to kind of give it some texture. Where is it? It's not the just iron? flat. Is, so it looks more like plaster. What? The iron. The iron should be over there somewhere, no? Not seeing it. Maybe it's over in the corner. I don't know. I'm getting it down in all the cracks here. Janice says she's excited to see the finished project. I'm excited to see the finished project too. I really do feel like we need to. Yeah, take a watch that corner down. Over fix there. this. This is where the wind blew it up. Look what the wind blew up. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Panel of the missing iron. I feel like just put some more of the decoupage on there and then just heat gun it. I feel like it needs more. If a little is good, a lot is better, Zip. Okay. All right, we'll just do half and heat gun it and see what happens. All right. All we're trying to do is just create a canvas-like effect. All right. Uh, I think we're past the canvas-like effect and we're full, we're full on bubbly decoupage. We're full on trying to figure out what the heck we made. Yeah. What is it? It's like Frankenstein. They're like, what did I make? It's alive. All right, I'm just going to get this in here. I'll show you what it looks like. Did you show them the flowers up close? Yeah. And my cardboard keeps falling out. So Karen says her husband is from Texas and he irons everything. I once worked in a mortgage company with a gal who ironed her kids jeans and starched them because he was a cowboy and he wore Wranglers and she starched his jeans. She used to take them to the cleaners, but then she couldn't <laughs> afford to do that anymore, but she still wanted them to look presentable. I was like, I'm just happy to pull the My jeans. shirt is wrinkly right now that I'm wearing. I'm just happy to pull the jeans. I woke up this morning. It was a little dark in the bedroom. I'm happy to pull the jeans out of, that's how we roll. All right, because this is clay, I can actually get texture from going up and down. If you're just using a regular paint, it's kind of thin and levels out, but the clay really does work for that. I'm just so over here eyeballing for the iron. It's got to be around somewhere, like maybe it's over in the storage area. Yeah, I'm going to look under my jacket. It might be sitting in there. It might be under your jacket or all the garbage on the other side. Alright, I'm gonna let you keep done this and answer questions too. Does that does that help the extra mop the extra? Just drying it out, it's definitely not getting rid of flat. wrinkles. Okay. And finish up oh. Did you splatter? Oh good. You just blow in for smudging on those. 
The gold is a little bit streaky because it's way shinier than this glass situation. But we can get we can get it on there. Okay. I like to really lay my paint on thick with my molds, and I almost use the clay paint like a back filler. If you use a thinner paint, I always get sad because I'm like, oh no, it's not hiding my mistakes. Okay. That's what it looks like with one coat of the weathered wood and all my farm wood spots totally falling off. Alright, you want to go there this? So we can white wax it? Sure. I'm late. What you doing? Making a mess. Just kidding. Debbie, I tell them what we're doing while I'm trying to find the iron. Alright, so we decoupage this. This was an old picture canvas and we bought it for the frame for 10 bucks because this had holes in it. This is just a glass, gold glass frame with glass in the well, it's a gold plaster frame with glass in the middle. And we actually put the IOD molds right on the glass and glued them on. And once that dries out, some of that detail will come back. And then this has been drying over here secretly, hiding away. And it's got two hooks that go on the front. We're gonna put these white inserts in after we do some stamping or some transfers or something on them. And this is just cardboard. I'm a quick little recap for you there. This is painted in apothecary. This is weathered wood. And we're using the, uh, now you made me, well, I guess you didn't make me it. I got to thinking about it too much. It's the, uh, the heirloom roses mold. Oh, it's right here. Is what this is. Aha. Just had to bend over. It was on the floor. I couldn't see it. It was too And we low. painted this. Do you want to, you know what you can do, Zeb? Mm -hmm. He got those two white pieces of cardboard. They're almost dry and you can show them stamping and we can finish that one project way over there. We'll get right. one done. So. You're going to have to respond to comments though. Careful. Zeb, hold. Yes. Zeb, sweetie. What? I need the heat gun. I'm going to oh, sit you down just here. moved the camera like crazy. No, you moved the camera because the heat gun is. I haven't pulled on the cord. <laughs> Can you hand me the heat gun though? No, put it off. I'm just going to put it underneath here. Alright. So you're not going over the table. Well, let's move the camera back. Okay, just a second. Plug it in the iron. We're using the heat gun so we can get stuff done quick for you. Sorry. Alright. Not the iron. Let's see if this helps. I don't think it will. But Oh you, you need never a little know. faith. Alright. Well, it's... so what I'm worried about is that you're it's going to That's fine. It's okay. the backside. What I'm worried about is that it's going to uh, the the liquid patina isn't dry yet, and it might stick to the iron. You don't want to push too hard. You don't want to stretch that fabric. Does it have steam in it? Is that water? No, oh, there is water in it. It's probably not the best idea to have water in it, but it I is didn't. flattening it out. So I'm going to call it in. And I'm heat gunning to get this dry so we can white wax it. Are you wanting to paint this more or are you going to leave the gold? What? Jamie, are you going to leave the gold on here all um, streaky? No, I'll probably put natural coat on there, but we can white wax the middle. That little patina is not dry on that section. It is flattening it out. Yeah, the wrinkles are still, you can still see them, but they're flat now. They're not all raised. Yeah, so that will help. Sorry, guys. Don't mind me. I'm just ironing paper that I decoupage to an old canvas. That's perfectly normal to be doing on a Wednesday morning. I'll show it to you up close once I'm done with it so you guys can really get the full effect. Thank you, Raquel. We're glad to have you as a channel member. It's really fun. The channel membership is uh, one of our favorite things that we do, those extra live videos where we're pretty candid and give uh, little tips and tricks on running the business. Yesterday was live video day. We had live video for our channel members, our business coaching group, and then we filmed the mannequin in between. So lots and lots of filming. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. Actually, I like that flattened a little, like the texture is kind of cool. Yeah. So that actually worked really well. The iron works. Now you know you can iron the decoupage on a canvas if you need to. So the thing is, this is my this is my predicament that 
I feel like it needs more like something on it. I'm wondering if I should. You just put something on the what? what do you I wonder mean if I should throw a coat of paint on here. For what? To add a little bit more thickness. I think it's fine once you start doing uh, what you're gonna do. Hmm. What color paint are you thinking? What, I'm just gonna put so some are you white. doing transfers on there, or are we stamping that? I was gonna do some leftover transfers. Okay. What do you think? Decisions, decisions. I gotta get this extra off the edge here. All right, that's ready for a second coat when we're ready. You can see how some of that detail on the roses came back. I'm gonna go ahead. And Jamie put enough paint on that glass that the glass kind of has a fun texture now too. You can show what it looks like on the back. This is the back side. <laughs> you can see where those molds are. I can't. That one's not open. Okay, that one is open. All right, I'll paint this a second coat in a minute. I'm gonna move on to this. Are we just stamping farm animals on this? Oh. What? So you got the white ink out. Can you pass me the scissors over there? Oh, we need yes. black ink. We need black ink. I don't know what I was thinking. This okay. is the point in the uh, the live stream. If you can't follow what's going on. Where we have a million things going on and it gets a little messy on the table. I'm just going to add some transfers to this, I think. I think I'm going to go with the sheep and the pig. This is Flora Peri... I can't say it. Flora Parisiens something. Parisiensis. I always just go... I just always search Flora when I need to find it. So we got the pig stamp and the farm animal stamp and the sheep stamp and they're going to go on this white painted cardboard. Okay. I'm just using leftover transfer because this is Waste Not Wednesday. You can't open a new tube on Waste Not Wednesday. I'm going to go to the side on this. Now, the thing that might be tricky is that I don't have a hard surface to push this up against, but, you know, we'll make it do. Remember the one time we did that one canvas and it took forever? That black one. Oh, yeah, like, where we did transfers? Yeah. Where's, yeah. The, where's the stick at? Do you know? They're in the hot glue gun box. Got it. So, let's see if we can get this on here. Okay, it's coming on. And I'm using the black IOD decor ink here. All right, I'm gonna do this, then you can see both of us. Oh. Zeb hates weird camera angles, but. Oh, that's all right. People that's... hate it more when they can't so see what we're So it's not doing. crooked, it's just a weird angle. And so this transfer, I think I've used for like three different projects. And I do that a lot because they're a little bit spendy and so I try to get my money's worth out of them. I think okay. this one is thirty dollars, but if you do it for three different projects, then you know it's not too bad. All right, the pig will fit. It's confirmed. Oh, this is working a lot better than that one. What did you put up underneath? Nothing. Oh, you don't have anything. Up Just underneath? the the patina. I think last time our patina wasn't dry enough. Oh. Like our sealer underneath. But this time the sealer's dry and so it's just going on really good. So. Some people were on our video that haven't watched this a lot, they didn't quite understand what the concept of a transfer is. Think of like a really, really thin vinyl sticker. But it doesn't really look like a sticker when you put it on because IOD makes it so they have a very small, um, oops, oopsie daisy, moving things around, uh, what we call halo. And that's like what's the edge of the transfer. So it doesn't look like a sticker when you put it on. If you use a different brand or a cheaper brand, a lot of times you can see the edge of the transfer and it winds up looking like a sticker. So always be careful because that would be a pain in the butt to get a project done and then, then it looks have like a, a sticker. halo. Are we white waxing this, distressing it? What do you want to do on this? Uh, let's just go ahead and white wax it. White wax. It's pretty fresh, so it might distress a little bit when you wax it. I'm going to try to and clean up as I go here. all the detail because that has a ton of texture on it. So oh. you guys can see how this is going on here. I 
And I might, I was actually thinking that I might seal this, let it dry, and then maybe later, not today, we won't make it today, but use like a, the dark and decrepit to do like a little aging. So this is the, uh, the Paint Pixie quarter, I believe, brush. I don't actually think that we still carry that. We only carry we one not? size of the flat top. Oh. But you can also use the JRB stencil brushes for waxing. Yeah, that's why I grabbed it, because it's small and fits in here. The number 20, I believe? No, the 22. The 22 brush would fit in these little wax samples really well. Yeah, if you buy a little wax sample and you can't get your big wax brush in there, just get yourself a stencil brush. It does work. Should take this out of the rotation. Can't be showing people things they can't get. Well, you know. All right, I'm getting there. A lot of people take their transfers down. That's probably a good idea. I never do because I'm impatient. Once you kind of get the edge down, though, on something like this, you can kind of pull it up as you're doing it, and it goes a lot faster. You don't have to, like, rub every last detail. See how I'm kind of pulling that up there? And if a piece actually sticks, you can just put it back down, and like if it doesn't stick to where it's supposed to. I didn't know you could do this until I went to my first IOD training as a retailer, and they're like, yeah, you don't have to do all the edge. You just kind of ride the wave. And I was like, what? Life changing. Okay. Got some white wax on this. We're, it's about to come together, folks. Um, I would maybe buff it a little. Are you going to do that? Yep. Okay, so this is the white wax on here. Kind of gives it a fun, I don't know, not necessarily age, but almost like a whitewash look. And I'm just going to rub that excess wax back before it's dry. Just a, just a rag here. And then we'll buff this probably tomorrow and it'll be done. I'm going to do another little sidebar. Alright, just making sure. It's another piece of that flora transfer. I'm going to put that over there. This could be a colossal mess or really cool. I'm at that stage where I'm not really sure. I love the texture on it though with the paper. It looks fun. Looks fun? Yeah, it's got like a good uh, artsy medium to it. I'm always down for the artsy fartsy. I didn't say fartsy, I said artsy. I know, I say fartsy. Because <laughs> it's fun and artsy, that makes it fartsy. You know, I said that joke in a video and nobody really commented, so I'm probably the only one that thinks it's funny. Zebra, are you responding to comments? Over no, there? I've been letting things go by. I've been showing I'm sorry. Stuff. I, I always try to let him do comments, but... We had some super chats that I missed what? from Brittany Brown and Tammy. Oh, Tenny, the sleep on the job. And, and uh, Jana. And Michelle. Well, thanks for all the super chats. Thank you, guys. guys. That's awesome. It's lunch today. I got, well, it, you, it wasn't scrolled down to the bottom. And Rose Lewis, her puppy woke her up, and now she's catching us live at 4 a.m. in Australia. That's a dedication right 4 there. Okay, so here we are. The sheep is a little big, the pig's a little big, but I like it. I think it's cute. I would have probably just done half the animal. So if it yeah, like off-center them. That? Next time on the cardboard, we'll off-center them. No, they're okay. They're, they're just okay. They're not. They're not amazing. Off-center yours when you do yours. You know. <laughs> Here, can you take that off? I think they're fine. All right. Problem so when you're pulling those off is you're grabbing right here and it pinches I'm it. it. Yeah. Okay. Well. I'm using the, what is this called? I can never say it. Ephemera? Efe ephemera. Ephemera. This is just left over from a few weeks ago. I was using it and I wanted to redo it. Let's see. I gotta cut this part off. Because it's flopping around in here. Use it in a little bit. That is the only problem with using just bits and pieces is storing them. I don't 
Oh, no, uh, we're right on the hour mark here. Oh, we gosh. might go over a little bit. We're guys. definitely going over because I'm going to finish this because I have a feeling that people might be kind of skeptical of it. If I don't finish it, they're going to be like, was that really a good thing to do? All right. So I've got I to gotta prove my crafting situation here. All right. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to figure what needs to be cut off of this. Sharon Robin said, I want to place an order, but does it, does it still take two weeks for delivery? So we have the disclaimer on there, especially in the winter time, because sometimes we don't always get our shipments from manufacturers. But if it's in stock, it is not taking two weeks to get it out to you. We get it out pretty quick and it's on its way. So if it's in stock order, and if it's not, we usually let you know, hey, we're waiting on this for your order. Yep. And you can always email customer care at jamerayvintage.com if you need something faster. I'm gonna do the word, I think I'm gonna slide it over a little bit there. This one might be more difficult because Letters are a pain. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat the letter situation here. But yeah, we spent last fall really trying to amp up our inventory situation so that if there were delays from the manufacturer, uh, we're, we were able to get you your products. We're caught up um, from when we, because we did all the first generation IOD and we had a sale. And anytime we do a sale, it gets crazy town around here. We still have a little bit on sale for 20% off, but we've caught up on orders. Ivy worked super late Saturday night, and then they they did two giant uh, post carts I dropped off yesterday of orders, so we're getting caught up. All right, so what I would do differently next time around is I would probably pull the pig over so his butt's off of the uh, square and his face is visible, and same with the sheep. Just pull them over a little bit so that they're prob the, the end of their head's probably about right there and off center them. My, my desire to center everything, and then when I put it in the frame, I was like, oh, that backfired. No, I still think it's totally cute. Yeah, it's okay. It's like I said, it's okay. It's not just okay, it's totally cute. Okay. Don't be don't be hard on yourself. I I'm like I'm not worried about it because you know it's cardboard and maybe an ounce of paint and a little bit of ink. <laughs> I'm totally sticking in the shop like that. Alright, do you want to work on this for me? And I'm going to heat gun that and white wax it. Okay. Okay, careful because this likes to shift, but we can't really tape it because it's paper. So oh, I've got that I've got that much done for you. Okay. I'm going to go back to comments. Yeah, I've been looking at a few of them, but, you know, not really. There's some questions on there, I think. That See, we animals need to are one of my most used uh, uh, stamps, for sure. And the letters type typesetting. You may have picked one of the hardest transfers to do on a surface that's not like really hard. like all these little letters are going to be fun. it looks good i had an idea i wanted it to look like old kind of labeling and that what is it called ephemera. ephemera i wish iod would name things words i could pronounce you think if i show them this up close they can see all the yeah detail on here that we've got mm -hmm. and you got some fun texture on the um i'm going to go around the edge here too a little bit a little more paint. Yeah, because I don't I don't mind here, but this edge is like that. You know how when you get a frame it's kind of plasticky? It's like that plasticky part and it's just too streaky for me. So I'm gonna put another coat on there and cover that streaky part up. What am I gonna do with the canvas? Um, I think we'll probably wind up putting another layer of liquid patina over the top of the transfer and then possibly do a little bit of dark and decrepit around the edges to age it because it's got this really cool canvas edge with the old nails in it and then it'll be decoration like a art piece to hang on the wall yeah we'll probably do like some sort of jute hanging string that hangs up at the top or, or you can just hang it without that you know could you put you could put something underneath the canvas to stabilize it for sure this actually is going on way easier than the last time it's just that the letters you can't Ooh. ride the way. Like we might be an yeah. hour doing this. <laughs> no, we won't be an hour. I'll come help you. 
They're going on really Heat easy. Heat gun 101. Keep it moving or you will bubble your paint. Ask me how I know. Did you get the white wax? Um, yeah, it's right there. And then okay. I was using this to... Did you? Oh, you white waxed the other thing. I was like, you didn't white wax this yet. Nope, I haven't touched that yet with the white wax. All right. All right, so this is going quicker than I thought. I'll stop whining about it. <laughs> I told you it wasn't too bad. Um, I am going soft with this, and normally you would just be able to go super hard, but like we said, the clay is still drying. It takes about 24 hours to dry all the way. So in this case where the clay, even though the paint's wet, the clay's, the paint's dry, the clay's wet, you gotta go in soft with your wax. But I want you guys to be able to see it, and I'm gonna texture up this whole area here that we did with the paint on the glass. They're probably thinking brown, huh? Well, with the white, it gives it like a nice, real aged gray look with the white wax. It looks a lot less brown. Yep, it does. But it, you gotta get the wax like in all the cracks because I'm gonna take a rag and kind of wipe it off the high parts and then it'll stick in the low parts. And you could do the same thing um, with like a white paint and then do like a dark wax. wax. I can't even talk. As long as it's contrasting, you'll get a good look. All right. I'm just gonna do to the edge because that edge is still kind of still kind of wet. Get that down in the cracks. So for those of you waiting on farmhouse videos, I think I'm gonna wire up the um, the bathroom today, and, and we'll get the light fixture in there. We've only been waiting since uh, I think we finished the bathroom end of August. Um, so that I think I'm I think I'm gonna work on that. We'll see. I have some stuff I've got to make for the website. All right, I'm coming in close here, so you can see the white waxiness. Is that a word? White waxiness. Now, if this cracks and you don't like it when it dries all the way, you can come back and fill it in with more clay. Sometimes I just repaint it or add more white wax. Also be careful when you're pushing against the glass and if your um, wax is fresh because you don't want to pull that paint off because it's not all the way dry. And another little pro tip is I can go behind the back, paint that with a, the same shade and there's like some spots where you can kind of see the clear glass underneath and then you just paint it from behind and you can't tell. You can kind of see why the pouncing was important because you wouldn't get that texture without that clay paint and pouncing. And if you were just tuning in and you didn't see me pounce, I was taking my paintbrush and going up and down and adding texture with the clay paint. And I will actually come back when it is all the way dry and buff this some more too, but I can't push super hard until it dries all the way. I need like a little corner of this. Get into all these cracks. You know what I think? Do you have, do we have our buff brush over there, Zeb? Can you grab me the buff oh, brush? Oh, Raquel Patine, another super chat. She says, I am struggling with the two-part stamps. What are the two-part stamps? Um, are you talking about like the blocking, when you do like the blocking out? I don't know. I don't know what she means by two-part stamps. All right, I'm gonna use my Buffy. This is a wax buffing brush that we carry and it's gonna get down into all those cracks. Oops, the paint's still wet. Eh, it happens. All right, you guys get the idea though. I'm gonna finish waxing the edge now that the edge is dried. 
She's asking about max masking. Masking. So go ahead and look. Have you watched IOD's video on it? They have. They are the experts. We we've have actually not. not tried to do. We've we've experimented with it, but not like on a like a full piece where we block everything yeah, I, out I and mask it. And... All right. It's good. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I should have probably changed the camera angle. That's all right. Yeah, this is a great way to create kind of almost a plaque effect, you know, those like European plaques without spending a ton of money. And usually they already have the glass in them, so you don't have to add anything to the middle and you literally just paint over the glass. Now what I would do is when we're all finished, I'm gonna add more wax, is silicone the glass or put something behind it so that way it's not shifting on you because you don't want it to shift. I'm just adding more of the white wax to the edges here. And then I'll buff it off later. And this is what I was talking about for, oh, Raquel says, thank you. Yeah, you can PM us if you have more questions about it, but that video that the sisters did is actually pretty darn great. It's probably because it's their stuff so they know how it works. That's like their favorite thing to do is play with their products. They send me pictures all the time of the new stuff they're working on. Isn't it funny how when you watch another crafter craft, then you get the desire to craft? Like, oh, I really want to try that. I think I got it in all the cracks where I wanted it. do what I was telling you guys about the back. See this part here? Just paint this side. And then anywhere where uh, you might have a peekaboo on the glass where the paint kind of shifts off because, I don't know, it's wet and you're waxing it like I am, <laughs> then you won't be able to see through it because you painted it on both sides. There will be no more peekaboos. There will be no more peekaboos, and even if the glass accidentally shifts, it won't look funny. The first time I did this, I did not do this, and then I had to come back and the glass had shifted, and I had to come in and paint different things. But anyways, this project is done. It'll get a little bit more bucked once the um, paper clay is all the way dry, and then you'll be able to see more of the details. But we gotta wait till that clay is dry to really get to it. We finished two projects. Steph, you need me to help you finish that one? Yep. I think if we do it together, I got a system down. It's With our quick. powers combined. All right. Let me go get a tray. And we'll I'll try make... to. We'll try to not be all. Take up all your time. All right. Here, scooch the. Okay. Can you get me a stick? I'll take that stick. Okay. <clears throat> Problem is that's a little wet right there. Yeah. I got to stick anyways. Make sure your uh, patina is dry. That's always helpful. Yeah. When you're not on a live video, just give it the time it needs. If you have any more questions, now's a good time to ask because I'm responding to your comments. Just sitting here. Or if we missed it earlier. Yeah. Although I think is Caitlin still on or is it Ivy right now? Jen, Wonder Twins Power Activate. <laughs> Great. I think Ivy's the one on here now because Caitlin, why do you have to lift the plastic? It just so helps pull it away. It helps, it's called riding the wave. So when you lift the plastic, once you get like part of a piece off, it'll just kind of peel off and stick as you go and it's, it makes it really easy. Makes it faster. And sometimes like the plastic part will kind of stick back down with a transfer a little bit and then you don't know where it's off and where you need to rub it on. Because essentially this is just we're rubbing on a transfer here. This is one of my favorite transfers. I love signage and old wording and things. Floral transfers are the easiest because they have big spots, but anytime you're dealing with words, you gotta like really Go to town and that is still wet there. Come on, get off. That one may, oh, there we go. Okay, so you gotta be patient. Where in the world do you find all your treasures? 
Watch our Saturday, look up our Saturday night thrift hauls. The but thrift mostly store. the thrift store, yeah. The thrift store, the side of the road. Lately, people locally have been dropping stuff off at the shop. So we get a, a bunch of stuff to go through and we pick our favorite things and then give away the things that we're not going to use in the shop. That's been kind of fun. And I like a good uh, challenge. So I like to see if I can recreate junk. And actually, like, the junkier it is, the better. Like, this piece, if you're just tuning in, was an old canvas that had holes in it, which is why we Mod Podged it. I think if it didn't have holes, I probably just would have painted it and then put the transfer on it, although the paper gives it, like, a really great texture. So. I'm pretty sure if you uh, ask Sally and Josie, the owners of IOD, this would be off-label use. Um, I don't know. As long as you can seal it, it's going to stick to it. Yeah. Debbie just did a transfer on a couch. I'm pretty sure that's off-label. Off-label just means not for its intended purpose. It's funny because I told Debbie that day, I'm like, why are we always on the same wavelength? Because last week we both did blended paint finishes. This week we both did uh, transfers. I'm like, what do you all right, I'm almost done. This is actually going a lot faster the more that I do it. Yeah. And I also think it's drier than it was when we first started, like the patina. I gotta make faces when I do it. I feel like that helps. It's very focused. It's a very focused task. Very focused. Oh, this has and I find the more I do it, I get down like real close eventually. <laughs> I watch myself like after like I do a video and I'm like, why did I make that face? And why do I have two chins? I don't know. The world may never know. I did my stairs with brown paper. Oh, we were just talking about that. People use it for flooring. So she did, did you use brown paper and do it like flooring? What did you seal it with? Um, let's see, Marilyn. And Ellen J Goods is on here. You guys, Ellen J Goods also an IOD retailer and she is awesome. She has some really great unique designs and I think Ellen has a really good restraint you know sometimes I see IOD and it's cool but they use like every product and it maybe needed a little restraint and Ellen knows just how much IOD to do she's really good at that even I sometimes go oops that was a little much well all the project products are so fun to use you know you just get going right. Okay, as soon as we're done with this portion, we're going to show it to you, and then we'll finish it off camera, and I'll throw it in the community, because obviously we need to do more ephemera over on the other side. Notice that I said our project? <laughs> I'm working on that. If you didn't watch the beginning of our video, you won't know why that's funny. Okay, good. i got to line that back up, because that C is not being awesome. Margie said, okay, so I'm late to the party. What time is it now in Utah? It's 11.20. Yeah, we just had daylight savings time hit, and we sprung forward. Yeah, and we actually would be done by now, but this is taking a little bit longer. Okay. I don't know why I thought this part was going to go fast. The other projects were easier. And we'll show you if you're just tuning in, because we actually worked on three different projects. For Waste Not Wednesday. Jana says we're our own worst critic. <laughs> no, sometimes I think my stuff is really awesome, and then the people on the social media let me know that I'm not as awesome as I think I am. <laughs> They're like, You uh, are awesome. That's not centered. Like, oh, we. Well, I feel like we don't center things on purpose on a very regular basis. That's what it is. We don't center it on purpose. I'm gonna. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Like that was totally. Like the, the sheep and the pig. It shouldn't have been centered. And you did center it. I know. Okay, we're almost done. We're so close to being finished here. It's like giving birth. Although I think I gave. I think it took. It was faster to push uh, out the kids. What, like 15 minutes a kid once I started pushing? Something like that. It was always a quick process. You know, once like, it was time to get down get to, to business. Get to it, man. My babies are big. My smallest baby was seven and a half pounds, but the rest of them were all eight and nine She pounds. was still 22 inches long. I don't 
at seven and a half pounds. She, she was. She was. She, she was looked kind of like a chicken. She was that super was skinny. Our, our other kids were all chubby. Okay, we're almost done here now that you've heard all my birth stories. Jana says, I'm here all day. <laughs> you know, throw, throw the video on and get a craft out and go. All right. This looks good, guys. I promise you. It does look. It does look. We're cool. over by a few minutes. We're over by 22. 22 okay. minutes. We're gonna have to fly this across so they can see it. Now, imagine that we've got more of this over here, okay? But this is the finished project. Oh, careful! And I may either use some dark wax or some um, dark and decrepit Around to age it a little bit. Yeah, but I'm gonna seal it first. So that's so picture this all the way across. We're gonna have writing all the way across there, and then we're gonna age it. And then our other project that we finished, it's actually done except for the buffing all the way, is our frame where we just used the glass that was in it, and I put molds on it, and then we made kind of like in a French looking plaque. And then Zeb's cute little cardboard farm animals that turned out, I think, pretty awesome. So those are our three projects. Our stamped on painted cardboard. And it's all junk that was floating around in my garage, and now it's stuff that I can sell. So to give you an idea of pricing, as people always ask, this will probably be priced somewhere around $22 for this. This, if it turns out the way I want, is probably going to be in the $80 range because it's big. And it used, I would say by the time I'm done, I'll have used the equivalent of one transfer because you know me, I'm always cutting and pasting. So about 80 bucks once this one's all finished. And then this probably, again, you know, like 16 to $18 on that. So, ta-da! All right. All right, guys. Don't forget to hit up jamierayvintage.com and find all these products. And we're going to put the finished projects on community and Instagram and Facebook so you guys can see them. Thanks for following along with us. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY and junk. Catch you guys later. Bye, guys.